This is my Kenwood MC60 uh, base station mic from my ham radio and I've got a repair to do and a mod. Uh, so the, the mod is that when you do the push to talk myself and another friend of mine would like a LED to light that actually says you're transmitting and that way if you click the lock button down to transmit and you, and you click it again to untransmit and you didn't click it good you'll still see the red light going. Now if you're paying attention to your radio you'll notice your radio is still transmitting but uh, it's just another feedback that you know your mic is still hot. Um, it's not that big of a hack but that's what we'd like to have and maybe we can do it maybe we can't. Now in the circuit it has uh, some amplification in for the mic it'll amplify the the mic it has its own built-in gain and they can get that um, power from an internal battery that you have to replace any, anytime it goes flat or anytime you leave the switch on uh, and I didn't like that. That's what I was doing. The reason I was doing that is because my connector for my radio was not providing 5 volts. That cable, the 5 volt line had broken at this point actually right here. So I had to fix this anyway. I had to tear this apart. Um, not, not, and going forward I'll have 5 volts coming into this circuit and I won't have any batteries in here and I can either use my I can either enable or disable my my gain um, for my mic. No more fussing with batteries. So I did take off the connector and I wrote down all the numbers and I took down all the colors so I can get that right again. Um, I'm also going to put on a larger collar so I'm going to replace the whole end. I like these bigger longer collars because you can get your fingers on them and twist them in and out, especially with the Kenwoods when they recess them. these re When they recess the connectors you can't get your fingers around that little collar. So that's another reason to take this off and uh, and replace it. So when I test this what I want to do is I want to have this resistor go through, or this diode go through a resistor that gives a brightness uh, mildly, like maybe 8 mil, may, maybe around uh, 8 milliamps would be about right, and this brightness looks good, at least on my bench meter it does 4 or 5 volts, and I, I just use my gang box to, to dial into that while having an inline meter, uh, amp meter, but we're going to do this on the radio, and knowing how that works on the bench supply is one thing, knowing how it works on the radio is another, what what you're really doing with the push to talk is you're grounding out, uh, you're grounding out your pin two of this cable, going to your push to talk circuit of your radio to ground. That's what you're doing when you put your your, your transceiver in to transmit. Well, that's fine. That's good. That two can go to ground. That's what it's designed for. But what I want to do is sitting on pin two. I want the back side of this circuit. I want five volts, which is pin five going through about a, I figure around a 200 or 390 to 400 ohm resistor uh, through the red LED and then to the push to talk circuit because the push to talk circuit is the top side of this of this rail. The bottom side of this rail um, is uh, ground. Eight. So it's going to have to be sitting with the push to talk and then when you push the talk it will ground out with the push to talk to pin eight and then and then both the radio will go into transmit and the and the LED will come on. Now the concern with that is I'm going to you know as long as the push to talk circuit in my radio cannot sink any current, which it shouldn't, um, we're fine. But I want to test that. I don't want to just assume that. Um, it, what if pin 2 is capable of sinking current? Um, maybe it's sitting around 0.7 volts right now. You know, maybe it's sitting around a half a volt potential and it can sink. And it's just waiting for that little pull to ground. I, I don't know. So there's a close-up of the mic output. Uh, it's marked uh, 1 through 8, 8 being the center. And 8 is the ground. Pin 5 is the pin that has the voltage on it. Um, it this radio is actually 8 volts, not 5 volts. Um, but we'll show that it is 8 volts to ground. And then we want to make sure that there's no voltage drop between pin 5, which is the supply voltage, and pin 2, which is the push to talk. Because that's what we're going to hook this little LED circuit up to, so that it can go to ground when pin 2 goes to ground. Now, uh, I recommend getting these probes. These are Fluke probes. They're 3 amp rated, uh, and, they're, uh, and they're CAT 2. They're really, really sharp, so they're great for testing small circuits and things like this. These are made by Fluke, and I'll have a link to them in the show notes at, on my Amazon store, as well as at Todd Fun um, in my Amazon store, ToddFun.com. Um, I got two sets of these because I'm constantly looking for them when I need to do stuff. 
um, just advice that's all so pin 5 and then ground and in the background we should see we have 8 volts the thing is is if we're gonna go from pin 5 to push to talk which is 2 where the circuit is we want to make sure that there's no voltage drop and we see there's no voltage drop so there is no voltage um, between those two pins so it should have no possible way of sinking any current and we've got DC milliamps and we've got a no light and we're a mega ohm so we'll start dropping this down first to 100k and there's 100k and we're up to well it's, it's basically nothing and we'll drop down to 10 <coughs> 10k and now we're about a half a milliamp and the LED is on um, but it would be a little hard to see that so I'm going to start dropping this down um, 8, 7, 6, 5 okay so at about 600k we're drawing a milliamp you might be able to get by with that but it's going to be sitting it might be a little hard to see uh, but certainly the circuit's capable of drawing a milliamp let's keep going down 4, 3, 2 now we're up to 2 milliamps at 3K. That's actually pretty decent. I don't know if I'd want it any brighter than that. Um, but I can decide that later. Now I get down to 3 milliamps. And if I went down to that, that's that's too, I think that's too bright. What do you think, Alex? Too bright for an indicator? Mm, no. Um, 5 mm. milliamps. I mean, I think I'll probably I think I'll probably go back up a little bit. That's a little too bright. Yeah, I'll probably put a circuit around 2K. That gives me about three milliamps, and, uh, and that's about right, the right brightness to know that you're you're transmitting. We need to drill a hole, so you can get one of these drill gauges at your hardware store, a big box store. We have our LED. We want to know what size hole to drill. You just start poking, poking until you get one that works. So this one is three sixteenths. Uh, so we pull out three sixteenths bit. I'm going to put a little center tap. I wouldn't hit this. Uh, this is, this is sort of a zinc extrusion. I wouldn't tap it too hard. But I think I want my light right about here. Take a bigger drill bit and just take the burrs off inside so you don't have anything out there. It won't even hurt to do the top side because it's such a chunky bit from Harbor Freight. And the LED, I already shrink wrapped it and already marked which is negative and positive. And uh, we just want to drop it in our new hole. I never wiggle out. So inside, everything is wired up again. We have. Uh, the LED wire here which goes up right there to the top comes around here and the patterns was inside here it changes five pin five is yellow it's five volts so I track the five volts and it goes to the center of this transistor right here so I just tapped on the center of that transistor ground of course I don't have to do anything with but it's green inside and the other one that I have to tap into is two which changes to black inside and it goes to push to talk, which which comes to this point right here. And so I tapped, I put my uh, shrink wrap around my, uh, I actually used a 1.2K ohm resistor. Turned out to be what I liked the most. And then I tapped into the circuit because there was a solder joint right here, which goes to the push to talk side. When push to talk is clicked, either either push to talk or the lock, it'll, it'll ground out the circuit to the ground rail going back through green. And both the transmitter will transmit and the uh, transmitting light will come on. That little guy. So we have the two mods done. The one mod is this collar over here. Um, we can see now that that's a larger collar. So you can just get your fingers on this now. Whereas it was recessed before you couldn't. It was just silly. And then the other mod is the uh, on the air light. And when you push the, you know, push to to talk, you see you're on the on the air, and that's a second indicator that in case you um, think you're not transmitting, you actually know you are. Uh, right now, when I do a push to talk, it comes on, and I'm transmitting into my dummy load right now. I got a 300 watt dummy load, just for testing stuff like this. Well, there you go. We have a on the air uh, LED indicator. 
So not that big of a deal. It's, uh, it wasn't that hard. You may be thinking, well, he just added an LED to a circuit. What's so big about that? The only thing that's big about it is we don't know if adding this LED was going to sync back, like we said earlier. We had to test, you know, I showed you that test, that you're going to have a circuit, essentially your radio, which is an expensive piece of gear, you don't want it to somehow have the push to talk able to sync current from that 5 volts back into the push to talk circuit of your radio. Is that normally going to happen? I wouldn't think so. I don't design radios enough to say that it wouldn't. But I wanted to test it because to me it's a black box. And I showed you that you may be dealing with some other circuit that may be even more mysterious and you don't have any schematics for. And then you shows you, you know, hey, you can test for that. And then the other thing is that, you know, is, dry, is drawing 5 milliamps on the 5 volt rail coming to this uh, too much? Is it already currently at its current envelope and it doesn't want to provide five more milliamps. Well there I'm just using engineering experience knowing that on a five volt rail adding five milliamps is not really that big a deal. Uh, so I was just risking that and, and we did it. <laughs> it didn't seem to hurt anything. Uh, and then the, the one test I, didn't, I don't think I showed was that um, was, was drawing the five milliamps in any way going to starve the amplification circuit in here so that it wouldn't uh, fully amplify the mic signal and give you the most power possible on your single sideband transmission. I did do that test too. It didn't have any effect. I would, didn't think it would, but you know, you want to test for that that you're not you know, losing power because you're starving your amplification uh, on your mic. So all those tests came out. Yes, it's a silly LED, but it worked out great. And if you have a circuit that's not even a radio or something else and you want to add an LED to it, then you understand how you have to think things through carefully, maybe test a few things, make sure you're adding an LED is going to hurt. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Wife's coming home.